Hey guys, I just surfed in on this shark here to tell you about today's sponsor. Surfshark is a VPN named after a fish, and I happen to be named after a fish myself. Using Surfshark will encrypt your online data, stopping anyone from seeing what you're doing without your knowledge, and this applies to your computer and your mobile devices. If you go to a lot of internet cafes or Starbucksies, public networks are about as safe as diving alone at night covered in blood, and wearing a salmon suit. But with Surfshark, you don't have to worry about a thing. It can also change your IP address to be in pretty much any country you want. So let's say you're traveling out of the country, but you still want to watch shows or movies that are only available in your country, like some shark documentaries, or such amazing shark films as Ghost Shark and Shark Exorcist. Okay, but to be fair, if these aren't available in other countries, then I might sympathize. If you follow this link at surfshark.deals slash fishstickonastick and enter the promo code fishstickonastick, you'll get 83% off your first purchase and an extra three months completely free. So thanks once again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Listen, I understand that when you have the holy mackerel as an option, Using anything else in the scout's melee slot just seems like a complete waste. But what if I told you that instead of a dead fish, you should be using a cardboard tube of wrapping paper paired with a Christmas tree ornament to murder people instead? Without any context to TF2, you'd probably think that's fucking insane. And even with context to TF2, you still might think that's insane, because the idea that the Rap Assassin is some trash tier scout weapon has been floating around for ages and I seriously, seriously do not understand why. Maybe it's because, for a long time, it existed in the shadow of the Sandman. You know, back when that was actually busted as shit. So back then, when you had the choice between being rewarded with completely ruining the enemy's movement and removing their ability to fight back for several seconds, and hitting them for a bit of damage and causing them to bleed, both for the same skill, the choice couldn't be more obvious. But even now that the Sandman has been decancerified such to the point that it's barely, if ever, worth using, the stigma with the Rap Assassin still remains. Even in my recent video where I pointed out that a years long standing bug had finally been fixed, I still got comments like this. A crappy weapon made slightly less crappy, but still overall pretty bad. I see this kind of sentiment echoed in a lot of places. Does this count as an exploit? Yes, yes, this probably does count as an exploit, just by definition alone. <laughs> but like, it's the Rap Assassin, come on. The Rap Assassin is so trash that it kind of needs it. I've never seen a competent player use this weapon seriously. Like, actually never. So, you know, take that as you will. You only ever see it used in gimmick loadouts like ranged flavor, exploiting a bug where you always get random crits with the ball, or the shitty speed and bleed babyface's blaster combo who came up with this garbage. But really, I think it's one of the best options for Scout's melee slot in the game. It's fantastic for a multitude of situations, rounds out Scout's weaknesses quite well, all while being a balanced side grade to Scout's other viable bat alternatives. So here's why I'm speaking in defense of the Rap Assassin. The Rap Assassin is technically a melee weapon, but you shouldn't ever really be using it as one. It deals minus 35% base damage to Scout's already pitiful 35 damage swings, meaning you're doing a solid 12 damage per hit with this bad boy. In other words, roughly the same amount of damage as you do to an actual person with a roll of cardboard. Even random crits with this thing aren't worth it, they only do 2 more damage than a stock bat swing. To make up for this though, it can be used to fire a Christmas bobble projectile with your secondary fire. This projectile deals 15 damage and inflicts 5 seconds of bleeding, adding up to 40 bleed damage or 55 total damage assuming the enemy doesn't heal off the effects. And by the time it's made contact and the bleeding has run its course, you'll be just about ready to throw another one as it recharges 25% faster than the Sandman's ball giving you a bobble once every 7.5 seconds. Now, the projectile also has an explosive splash radius that deals a random amount of damage, anywhere from 4 to 24 damage as well, and this can more than double the initial hit's damage, as well as give a small bit of damage to enemies you just nearly miss. While the extra damage is nice, the random damage is actually the one part of the weapon I'm not a fan of. I think it should be made somewhat consistent, 
either by how close the enemy is to the center of the radius like other explosive weapons, or with regular or even reverse damage falloff like most other weapons in the game. The explosion effect is good for that extra bit of initial damage, but it's really pitiful for hitting groups or using the splash for damage alone. The explosion effect also doesn't inflict any bleed, so yeah, just hit your balls. Wait. But fish you say, I'm a demo main. 59 to 79 damage with a single projectile doesn't cut it for me. Well, lucky for you. Since the Rap Assassin is a melee weapon, that means it comes with melee weapon perks. Those being a highly increased chance of random critical hits. Nice. A critical hit with the bauble deals a solid 45 damage. With the explosion and bleed, that can be up to 109 damage if you get the max random damage variance on the explosion. The explosion itself is unaffected by crits, however. But Fish, you say, I play on Uncle Topia because random critical hits are complete aids. How am I supposed to take advantage of these glorious critical hits? You're correct, little Timmy. Random crits are aids, but luckily for us, the Rap Assassin has guaranteed crits, and for some fucking reason, it's not listed anywhere in the weapon description. Yeah, if your bauble stays in the air for about a second or more, once it hits a target, it's a guaranteed crit. I've used this weapon for a while and I had no idea about this until I read it on the wiki a few months ago. I thought I was just getting random crits with this thing because fucking 40% chance on melee weapons. Oh, and on the subject of melee weapon perks, the ball itself counts as a melee attack, meaning it not only bypasses the vaccinator's resistances, but it also deals extra damage to Fists of Steel heavies. Yeah, the tube of cardboard that does no damage is actually one of the best weapons to use against the Fists of Steel. I'll let you sit with that one for a bit. Okay, so what's this all add up to? Well, the Rap Assassin sucks ass as a melee weapon. This is pretty much objective fact. The only reason you should ever try hitting someone with the wrapping paper itself is if you have no other options or you just really want to hear the satisfying sound of hitting someone with a cardboard tube. But, this is balanced out by the fact that the ball is really, really useful. It's highly effective at long range and still solid at mid range, and these are areas that Scout can often struggle in. It's a perfect tool for initiating a fight as it gives you a quick long range advantage without needing to use your primary or secondary. If you're at a long enough range to get a guaranteed crit, you can close the distance while using your pistol and then come into close range with a scattergun kill or at mid to close range, your initial damage and bleed are often good enough to help whittle down an enemy you're facing, especially a bulkier one you might otherwise have trouble with taking down solo. Oh, and speaking of long range, this thing is so good at countering snipers. Seriously, do you want to ruin a sniper's aim for the next 5 seconds and send him running straight for a health pack? Just hit him with one of these. Even engineers can have a hard time against this if you have a line of sight on them and their dispenser isn't right behind their ass so it's helpful at dealing with one of Scout's main counters without sacrificing the secondary that's really good at taking down sentry guns from a distance. What's really great about all this is, say you're a big fan of the guillotine, but you're also a big fan of the pistol and you have a hard time deciding. Well, this gives you a diet guillotine, potentially something just as powerful, if not more so if you hit those long range crit shots, while still letting you keep a pistol handy effectively removing the drawbacks of the guillotine while keeping the benefits. It basically acts as a second, secondary weapon. But surely the cost of the melee attack itself being trash hinders it, right? Well, no, not really. I've mentioned before that Scout already has a hard time making use of his melee weapons, unless they have some kind of utility, because his scattergun and pistol are so powerful in melee range that they make his melee option obsolete. The Rap Assassin completely bypasses this issue, and another issue of melee weapons. Melee hit registration is fucking terrible. Between teammates eating your hits, your hits vanishing into thin air, and the chance of getting one shot by the other guy's melee, why the hell would you want to run in with your melee as scout as any serious battle strategy to begin with? That being said, even though the ball deals melee damage, it is still a projectile, which means your teammates will still stuff your shots from time to time. But the ball at least recharges quickly enough that this isn't a major hindrance. And more importantly, it happens at a safe range and not when two of you are inside of each other trying to hit a close range enemy. The main drawback of the Rap Assassin only comes into play in those rarer situations where you're caught without ammo in the middle of a fight. And if you've managed to beef all your primary and secondary shots as one of the strongest close range classes in the game, and the guy you're fighting is still alive, 
That's God's way of telling you you're supposed to be dead. Try again next life, buddy. But even then, in those situations, it's still good because as you backpedal away from an enemy, you can toss a ball their way, still doing good damage and potentially finishing them off as you run away to safety. At the very least, ensuring they're unlikely to follow. The only time it's not a good idea to throw a rap assassin ball is when you're in the middle of a close range firefight shooting your scattergun or pistol, because at that point its damage is just outclassed. Okay, so to recap, it's really good at dealing with bulky enemies, snipers, the occasional engineer, and any fight in general as it essentially acts like a free pyro lending a hand with a helpful flare gun shot. The one drawback is basically meaningless in the vast majority of situations as a scout, and it helps make the babyface's blaster usable again. So why the hell have I been getting requests to do a bad weapon academy on the Rap Assassin since the series started getting popular? Is it just because weapon stereotypes said it was garbage? Really? You're taking Soundsmith's opinions on game balance seriously? Even he doesn't take his opinions seriously, except for when he does, which is kind of often. It's not even like it's broken anymore, outside of, I think, a couple areas on Turbine. The ball doesn't shatter in mid-air anymore, making it completely viable in nearly all situations. And really, what the hell are you doing playing on Turbine anyway? The point is, if you're like me and used to have trouble hitting your balls, then I really think the Rap Assassin is worth practicing in. It's a seriously viable weapon, and outside of these few areas where it doesn't work, I seriously think it's one of Scout's best options for the slot. Not just in casual, even in competitive, this is viable. Obviously you lose out on the building utility of the Basher, but still, it's good long range damage as Scout. It's damage over time in the middle of a firefight, you can use it preemptively or while you're retreating, it's just good. Not only is it one of Scout's best melee options, I think it's one of the best combat melee weapons in the game, right up there with the Market Gardener and Extinguisher. If you've been forming your opinions on the Rap Assassin just based on what you've heard from YouTubers and not actually having used it yourself, all I can say is, try it. I'm literally named after fish, and I barely use my fish anymore because the Rap Assassin is too good in too many situations, and honestly, it's just more fun. What can I say? At the end of the day, I just love hitting balls. God, it's not the Sandman episode.